Hi everyone, my name is Ruth and welcome to the 240th day of my challenge where a time has come to try out another recipe which you guys suggested and it was Marie's recipe, well it was Laura's recipe but Marie's suggestion which I feel it's been a while since I've tried uh, one of your guys' suggestions and this particular recipe, I know for a fact or request, has been sitting in my requests list for quite a long time. So, Marie, a time to try baguettes has come. And I have to be honest, on the one hand, I'm super excited because I love bread recipes. I love bread recipes. Uh, and in general, I love yeast dough recipes. I just love the process of it rising, the smell of yeast. It just, I don't know, it's like super then homey and warm and cozy and I feel such a super, you know, baker and whatnot. But on the other hand, as I am currently in Lithuania and I'm using my mom's kitchen and oven to be precise in this case, I'm nervous I will do something um, to kind of ruin it. I don't know. This making baguettes process, like once they go into the oven, is really interesting. Like you put cold water into a cast iron skillet, which by the way, this is another pickle my mom doesn't have in cast iron skillet, so I'll need to figure out what to do about that. But in, in any case, you put water into the oven. So, I don't know, that makes me nervous. <laughs> if it was my oven, that's okay, but like now it's like, the states are high. <laughs> so, let's go over the ingredients and let's get started. We're gonna need 500 grams of flour, one and a half cups of warm water, one cup of cold water, one envelope of yeast, two teaspoons of salt, one teaspoon of sugar, and some vegetable oil for greasing. yeast in the recipe usually this is the first step that is activating it here I have my warm water which I achieved by putting this water into the microwave for like 30 40 seconds uh, and warming it up because you do want it to be warm enough but not too hot so that you wouldn't kill the yeast so the rule of thumb I'm using is just I'm sticking the finger into the water or milk which usually is the case and just seeing whether it burns me or not. If it doesn't burn, that's the right temperature. So to the warm water, I'm gonna add the yeast and the sugar, give a little mix and let it be for five minutes and activate. Every single time in such case, I love zooming in as close as possible because I love showing you this. This basically means all this foaming up and actually you can definitely smell yeast when you see such view. Um, this is basically a proof that your dough will rise and then transform in the end into something amazing. So, I don't know, I just love showing you this. And this is another reason why I'm so excited about today's recipe. It is rare that I can use my lovely KitchenAid mixer. Uh, basically only when I'm in Lithuania and making some sort of recipes like this. But from the past, if you look back at my recipes where I try all the recipes of Laura in the kitchen, you can see that you can do such recipes, make such things yourself with hands. But this way is just less messy, quicker, easier and all that. So I'm really happy and excited today about that. So I'm going to use the dough hook attachment and to the bowl. Now I'm pretty much going to put everything else minus the cold water. That will be for that interesting action in the oven. So I'm going to add the flour, salt and the yeast mixture and then over medium heat, I wanted to say medium speed, I'm going to knead it for six minutes. So, so, oh my god, look how thick it is, but it's exactly how it should be. Okay, now let me just zoom out a little bit. Okay, this is better right now. Let's see. Uh, can I 
Can I take it that? Oh, okay. I can't take it out. Last time I totally embarrassed myself because I couldn't really take out the ball. That's how often I use this mixer. Um, so yeah, okay, now good. So, oh, the interesting thing about this though, once it started mixing, like kneading, I thought that there's too much flour because it looked quite dense and I was like, oh my god, what will happen now? Because Laura's dough is really runny if you watch her original video. Uh, so after a while though, it started getting like looser and runnier and I was like, yes, everything will work out. So okay, now I'm really happy. It is not as runny, I feel like, uh, as Laura's, but still, hey, look. It's sticky, right? So now I have a new bowl. I have some vegetable oil. I'm gonna grease the bowl with that. Then take the dough out. Those scraper would be so lovely right now. But that thing isn't it on. Oh my god, logistics problems. Like I can use this only here, that only there. Or should I be the person who is bringing those scraper with her when she's traveling? Okay, I need to contemplate on that. So anyway, so I'm gonna put the dough here. Once it's here, I'm gonna brush the top of the dough with some vegetable oil as well so that no crust would form. I have some plastic wrap here handy because I'm gonna cover the whole thing and then put somewhere warm for one and a half hours to rise. I don't know how to take this off, oh my god. Yay, success! One and a half hour has passed, which means that I'm so excited because I can proceed. I honestly cannot believe that I'm about to make baguettes. Not one, three. Oh my god. Okay, but before touching the dough, which will be very sticky and which will make my hands dirty, I do want to prepare my baking sheet by lining it with some parchment paper and then sprinkling uh, flour all over the top. If you have baguette pan, of course use that as I don't. I'll just use this. Let's see how that turns out. Now I'm curious. I didn't think of this, but now I'm curious how it will look like. I think a little bit flatter than uh, while well, using a baguette uh, this pan, okay. Like I have so many questions rising up whenever I'm trying a recipe and this is the current one. And here's the dough. And this is the recipe really to have a dough scraper because that would be so much easier. Now I'll just try and use a spoon because as you can see, this is a sticky dough, all right. So I'm keeping flour handy right next to me because I will sprinkle my surface generously with flour, dump the dough or I just say scrape with a spoon add a little bit more flour on top of it and then just knead for a couple of minutes just to kind of pull it together. I don't want it to be that sticky anymore, but at the same time, I don't want to add too much flour so that I wouldn't make the dough too dense. I just repeated what Laura said and now let's see how that goes in practice. Okay, I feel like this is the perfect consistency for this dough because as you can see, it is a little bit sticky still, but it's super elastic, which I feel like Laura had the same. So, okay, if my hands weren't dirty, I would pat myself on the back. Okay, so now I'll try and eyeball it actually, but you could use a scale, which is very weird that I won't do that. Well, I have an explanation. My hands are dirty. So anyways, I'm gonna eyeball it and divide this dough into three equal pieces. And then I will kind of roll out. I shouldn't even say roll out, like stretch out. Pull out three uh, ropes, 30 centimeter ropes, baguettes. You can bet your money, I have a ruler nearby. So this is the size, well, somewhat the size I will aim for. Oh, sorry, that's the dishwasher. So three of them. And then another thing while doing that, I will actually work on making them imperfect, which is such a weird thing to say for a perfectionist. Okay, but all those tears and like those 
uh, kind of like scratches on the top of the baguettes will make for the best uh, crust ever, Laura says. So now, perfectionist side aside, I'm gonna try and work on my imperfect baguettes. Realizing they're really different sizes. Okay, so now I want to sprinkle them with a little bit of flour, cover with a lint free towel, and put to some warm place again to rise for another hour. Oh, wait, I totally forgot. I should have made slits. Okay, so like three, four slits on top of each baguette. God, this is so exciting! Okay, so 15 minutes ago, now one hour has passed, so 15 minutes ago I've turned on my oven to preheat to one, wait, no one, 240 degrees. And that's not all, to the very bottom rack I put a baking sheet and on top of that my cast iron skillet or something that will be that for today uh, and now as my oven has preheated let's have a little sneaky peek oh my god i'm so excited <gasps> okay oh my god they grew so much but they totally are touching each other okay i should kind of move them but they look so cute so here's how it's going to go i'm gonna put this rack to the very top shelf and then at the same time i'm gonna add this cold cold water to the skillet, shut the door immediately and let them bake for 30 minutes. Oh, this is not a good time to film the ending because my neighbor's kid started playing outside. My dog decided to eat right now. There's a lot of noise everywhere, but I have to do this because they're still warm and oh my God, I'm so disappointed in myself because I totally should have uh, kept a better eye on them. Like you should definitely start checking on them like 25 at 25 minutes mark, I would say, because look, they kind of burned them. And I feel bad because I already boasted that I'm making baguettes and that I can bring one today. So yeah, now, now I'm a little bit embarrassed because I will bring a little bit burned baguette. But before I try it, and this looks really nice, though it looks kind of dense, I have to say. It doesn't look like that fluffy baguette inside, but again, this is homemade. I love how it looks though, like all these things makes my mouth water. So let's stop chatting, which I like to do so much. And let's try. Mmm, but it actually does have the texture of baguette. It's really crusty from the outside. It's kind of chewy and soft from the inside. It's a real bread taste, this one. Oh man, this is nice. Except for the burning them part. Mm. My dinner today, oh my god. Will you let me boast a bit? This is my dinner, which I will make a tomato and basil bruschetta with my own homemade baguette. Like how fancy does that sound? If you want the recipe for that, I will leave the link in the description box because I did try. I believe it was the very first video, like the very first recipe I tried. Might be. I'm not sure, but I think so. Oh my God. So anyways, how fancy is that? everything homemade. And these tomatoes, by the way, are also like homemade. So anyways, this, this is really cool. Though, again, crucial part here is to start checking so you don't burn. This is my mistake. 
I don't really check so much. Why? Why do I do that? Like I always tend to do that, like start talk and start eating again. I want to show you this. Oh, don't you worry though. I waited for like 10 minutes for them to cool down because you know, you kind of, when you have something like this, you kind of want to dig in right away, but you do know that you will burn yourself. So this mandatory at least 10 minutes wait is a very good idea. This is pretty hot, that's why. That's why I'm that cute today. So anyways, I really hope that this was helpful and somewhat fun. I loved trying today's recipe. Thank you, Marie, so much for this. Making bread at home is always fun. I'm pretty sure we'll try this recipe again, but we'll be a bit more careful, you know? So, if you want to check the original recipe, go there. <laughs> if you want to find the written one, check in the description box down below. Oh, actually, also another tip. I think next time, and I'm like showing like this, you cannot tell, I know, because of the mitten. Oh, but I'm so afraid that I will drop it. <laughs> So I would put 450 grams of flour, just because Laura's dough was a little bit runnier. Yeah, so many creatures around me today. So I think that might be connected to the denseness of the bread. If it was a little bit runnier, then the bread would be softer. I know that, don't ask me how. Okay, anyways, I really hope that this was fun and helpful, and I'll see you soon. Bye!